Technology is often said to be cold. I can't say that my smartphone expresses many feelings, but it is, it is still what stays closest to, to, to me f for the whole day, where it mostly lies in my pocket uh, and let me know when it wants to interact with me. Why are smartphones still so popular and not something we get bored by and stop using? Because it is not just technology. The smartphone is really great in supporting our interaction with other people. Uh, earlier, we had to walk over to the fixed phone if we had any phone at all in our house. It, it was dependent on the other per person answering. Uh, so if none answered, we had to call back later until we got in touch. <laughs> so, but these days, it, it is much easier because we, we, we see, in, uh, see on the screen if, if someone ha has tried to call us. And, um, we can interact in many ways, including with using, uh, using text messages. So, uh, technology has, um, has, has become smarter uh, and serves us in a better way than before. A, a new great thing called artificial intelligence it can make the, uh, technology learn uh, similarly to humans learning from trial and error. And new knowledge and skills are being integrated with what we have learned earlier. A simple example of that is the, is the simple but effective support that we get when we are writing text messages on our phone. When we start typing a new word, a set of words for us to select from are being proposed. Uh, and normally, the, 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 the more messages we have, have been writing, uh, the better match we are getting. Well, uh, uh, it is really a simple approach, but still it demonstrates that our smartphone is able to learn. Uh, and humans do the same. Uh, when we uh, uh, talk together, we often try to, to guess and express what the other person is going to say. However, most of it is like that because we would like to finish talking. <laughs> and especially if you have a stutter problem, like me. In, this, um, in the same way, we only... Um, only want the help of technology which we see is beneficial to us. Otherwise, we will not like to use it and depend on it. There are many examples of technology that has flopped and not been of interest to potential users. We are currently working with developing robots for elderly care, which may improve safety and increase quality in home care services. However, if the robot arriving in our home is looking or behaving in a frightening way, then none of us would like to have it close by. <laughs> and the smartphone uh, has in many ways changed the way we live our lives and interact with others. Our need for planning has, has been reduced since it is so easy to get in touch Uh, it also helps us with, uh, with solving problems by giving answers to questions we never would have dared asking a human about. <laughs> Mostly. Um, uh, what computers with internet uh, are capable, capable of doing are in, in many ways um, more advanced than what a human is able to do in terms of uh, computation and storage of information. Uh, however, luckily, I mean, you, humans are good at some other tasks that the computers are still not so good at. Uh, and that includes our three main tasks, starting with sensing with eyes and ears, breathing in the neurons in our brain, and, and acting um, with our body parts when we either move or talk. 
So the intuitive way of making more advanced technology uh, is to mimic human properties. We can do that in many ways. And, and one way is to look at the process of evolution between generations, uh, which is helpful for, for making technology adaptive. But definitely most popular human, human mechanism to, uh, to mimic is our brain. Uh, and that was also how I got interested in artificial intelligence for more than 25 years ago. It has recently become possible to train a longer chain of artificial neural layers than before with what is called deep learning. It has given really good results uh, and is now widely applied, uh, including to, to recognize speech in smartphones. And we at the University of Oslo apply it for robot companions that will be used for sensing the condition of, of elderly living in their homes to issue a warning if there are any abnormal conditions uh, that seems to be developing. However, the history of great inventions has also shown us that we should not always make uh, our technology as similar as possible to what we see out in nature but rather extract some key underlying principles. And that was what the Wright brothers did when they studied plane design in a wind tunnel for more than 100 years ago. Uh, and they came up with a design that it didn't have any flapping wings. Uh, however, with a properly curved wing shape, it was able to, fl able to fly. A technology that we are surrounded with and have gradually shrunken in weight and size. However, shrinking is not applicable to all technology, since we are living in a physical world. So to have interaction with our surroundings, we need, in addition to, to our small technology, we also need some potentially large mechanical systems. We need robots. After our first wave of, this, uh, of shrinking smartphone technology getting close to us, we now see a second wave of robots approaching. Uh, they have for a long time been uh, hidden in factories. However, now they are approaching as lawnmowers outside our house and vacuum cleaners on the floor uh, also inside our house. And they will continue to move, to move up from the floor and into rooms like our kitchen, where we in fact have had some, uh, some simple robots for a long time, been mixed masters and blenders. However, they will get much more advanced in the future, uh, and we will be able to cook together with the robot and, and have the robot uh, prepare our, our complete meal by itself when we come home. Um, uh, and elderly care is a big challenge in the Western world with the shrinking birth rates. And elderly would have to live longer by themselves often alone if the partner has passed away. Uh, to what extent robots can be of help uh, is currently a key question, and often linked to, to, to worries about elderly becoming very lonely and only surrounded by robots in the future. At the same time, I believe dignity uh, comes partly from being able to manage ourselves, and here robots can be of help. Uh, whether it is to washing ourselves, eating, or something else. Autonomous cars that are now uh, approaching on the street would be a great tool for, uh, for having more social activity, since they may take elderly out and around for them to have a more active social life. So, in the same way as Google uh, is today helping us with our information needs, robots will be helping us with our of our physical needs in the future. And, however, they need to operate properly for us wanting them close by. If they hit us unintentionally or work too slowly, few would accept them. However, artificial intelligence can help train mechanical robots in behaving in a friendly and user adapted way. And this dynamic behavior may be perceived by us as the robot having a, 
some kind of personality. This may make us really enjoy having it, it around like we do with a cat or dog. <laughs> uh, but uh, similar to animals having many senses, uh, th 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 these robots would be having a number of sensors like a camera and microphone, and we need some assurance that, that uh, data coming from these sensors are, are, are not misused by anybody. It is not only up to the robot engineers to determine how our future with robots would be, but it's also up to the politicians and society to decide, including on how many people should be employed in elderly care and less physical work with elderly is needed. At the same time, if future robots are taking care of many of our current jobs, people in a family will generally have more free time including time, time to spend with their elderly family members. And finally, today's elderly should not worry about future robot technology. It's rather us who are younger, including those of us who are currently working with developing elderly care robots who will be confronted with having elderly care robots close by when we get old in the future. <laughs> so it's really in my own interest to try to contribute to make warm and user-friendly robots. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>